today I'm just going to talk about um, pertaining the biology WIAC 2023 exam that is coming up on the 7th of June 2023. Uh, one of the topics I want to revise very briefly is classification of living things. In case you want to go through introduction to biology, the organization of life, check my previous um, one of my videos, I already explained it there. Okay, so real quick, classification of living things. Now, first and foremost, when you are given that kind of um, what it entails, it's talking about how living things are classified, you know, in their different hierarchies, whether plants or animals or microorganisms, okay? Now, the big name, the name that comes in place when you're talking about classification of living things is a Swiss scientist. A Swiss scientist, a scientist from Switzerland called um, Carolus Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus. Okay? Um, 1707 to 1778. Okay? Um, this intelligent scientist is considered, is called the father of classification, is known to be the father of classification. Okay? So, um, this great scientist. His work is known throughout the world because he is the one that brought the foundation. He is the one that set the stone on anything pertaining to classification of um, you know, living organisms in their different genus and species and you know, class and order thereabout. Alright? So, um, we are going to just quickly look at... He created um, an arrangement of living things. Like, he created an arrangement, alright? I remember living things. The first one is the kingdom. The kingdom is the general, you know, every other thing is inside the kingdom. Okay, so it's like we're zooming in. So we have the kingdom. Then from kingdom, we have phylum. Phylum for animals, division for plants. Then we have class. Then we have order. Then we have family. Then genus. Then species. I'll start again. Kingdom. That was the arrangement. Kingdom, then we have phylum for animals, division for plants, it's still within the same box. Then we move to class, then order, then family, then genus, then lastly species. So there are seven, if you count it, it's seven. Seven, okay? So it's called the arrangement of living things. Every living thing is arranged in that category, okay? Carlos Linnaeus is the one that designed that. All right. So um, he also one of his accomplishments. He also created something called the binomial nomenclature system of classification. Okay, the binomial nomenclature system. Okay, what does that mean? He was the one that brought about scientific names for living things. For example, rice. We have Oriza sativa. Of course, scientific names. It always starts with the capital letter. Okay, the first name starts with the capital letter, the second one starts with a small letter, and they are underlined. Okay, um, like purple, karika, papaya, we are familiar with that. Um, oranges, citrus, sinensis, um, housefly, musca domestica, man, homeo, sapien, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's called the binomial nomenclature system. Okay. All right. So aside from that, um, he went further to create kingdoms. Okay, he said that there were two kingdoms. He was, he was according to his work. He said two kingdoms: kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia. But unfortunately, he died. His work wasn't finished. So two other scientists, the, the name of um, Schwartz and Margulis, those guys finished the work for him. Okay, so they added three more to his already existing two kingdoms because they said where will you place microorganisms they are neither animals nor plants so we now have generally we now have five kingdoms okay so the first one is kingdom um, monera kingdom monera examples bacterials okay bacterials um, the next one is uh, number two number one was kingdom monera examples bacterials Number two, um, kingdom um, protista, kingdom protista, examples, we have uh, Euglena, um, Amoeba, okay, yeah, 
Then number two and number three. Sorry about that. We have Kingdom Fungi. Kingdom Fungi. Bye bye. Kingdom Fungi. Um, examples: Mushroom Yeast. Mushroom Yeast. Um, then we have the next one, and that's uh, number four now. Kingdom um, Plantae. Plantae. Under Kingdom Plantae, we break it down. We have um, um, va non-vascular and vascular. Okay. Um, Non-vasculars, there are two. We have um, talophyta and bryophyta. Okay. Why for um, vascular? We also have two. We have pteridophyta and spermatophyta. Okay. Now, under the um, non-vascular, talophyta is the lowest in the plant kingdom. They don't have root, they don't have leaf, they don't have stem. Okay? Yes. Now, for Bryophyta, Bryophyta is slightly higher than Talophyta because it comes next. But it doesn't also have leaf, root, stem. Okay? It just looks, it does have something that looks like. Then, we move to the one, the Vasculars. The Vasculars, Petridophyta has leaf, has stem, has root. Why Spermatophyta has well developed. Okay, example of. Um, Sorry, example of bryophyta. Mm -hmm. Example of bryophyta. Um, we have moss. Moss, okay. Why pterodophyta? We have fern. This example is fern. Fern, okay. Then um, for spermatophyta, we still break them down into two. We have the gymnosperm and the angiosperm. The gymnosperm and the angiosperm, okay. Okay, yeah. So um, under the um, gymnosperm, the gymnosperm example of gymnosperm is conifer, ginkgos. Okay, then under the angiosperm, we have monocot and diacot. Okay, monocot and diacot. All right. So that's it for kingdom plantae. Then we move to um, kingdom animalia, animalia. That's quite bulky, okay. Under Kingdom Animalia, we have um, Porifera. Poriferas, those are the lowest in the animal class. In fact, Kingdom Animalia is divided into two as well, invertebrates and vertebrates, or they are called Chodata. Invertebrates are animals that don't have backbones, yes. Why vertebrates, they have backbones, and they are also called Chodata. Or data okay now the invertebrates now I'm mentioning them I'm starting from lowest to highest so we have the porifera poriferas examples we have um, sponges they are located in aquatic habitats sponges then um, the next one we have coelenteratas coelenteratas e.g. we have hydra or jellyfish then we have a um, plytae helmet Plata elements, plata elements. Example: tapeworm, tapeworms. Then we have uh, nematoda, nematodas, nematodas, roundworms. Okay. Then we have anelidas, anelidas. Examples: earthworm. Okay. Then molluscus. That's snails. Okay. Now we now go to. Um, Andropoda, Andropodas, those are the largest in the plant kingdom. They are the largest organisms. They are, the, they are abundant, they are many. Those are the insects, and they are broken down into four. The first one, number one, is crustaceans. Examples, they are crabs. Okay. Number two um, is insectas. That's grasshoppers, housefly, you know, examples of that. Then we have um, arachnidas, arachnidas, spiders, scorpions. Okay. Then we have uh, myriapodas. Myriapodas, those are centipedes and millipedes. So that's it for andropods, andropodas. Then we, we have left the. Okay, lastly, under the invertebrates, we have Echina domata. Echino damata. Echino damatas. Okay, those are starfish. Starfishes. Then we now have uh, Chordatas. Codatas, that's vertebrates. Under Codatas, we have Pisces, 
Pisces is the lowest in the Kodata family. That's an example fishes, tilapia. Then we have um, amphibia. Amphibia, we have um, frogs, toads. Then we have reptilia, that's snakes, crocodiles, tortoise. Then we have apes, birds, ostrich, you know. Then we have, lastly, we have mammals. Mammals, dogs, humans, elephants, lions, you know. They give birth to the young ones alive. They are also called viviparous. Um, any animal that lays egg, they are called oviparous. Okay? Alright, good. So that's basically everything that encompasses and encapsulates classification of living things as quick and as easy as possible. So please go back to what I've said, read through. Okay? I will see you in my next class. I will drop another quick lesson. As quick as possible. God bless you. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay? I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.